This video on integrating tractors, unlike the other videos, was re-recorded from a video that was produced with more primitive equipment. However, it is still serviceable, gives some useful information on exact equations and integrating factors, and so is offered for your consideration. But first, a few points of clarification. The pen used was also inferior, and so the handwriting is unfortunately of poorer quality than in the other videos. Uh, please excuse uh, various uh, extreme, extraneous noises that were not filtered out. Uh, there is a bit of an echo in the audio. And finally, in the, in the presentation of the example uh, of the integrating factor that does not depend on y, there was a moment where I was a bit stage struck. Uh, please excuse the uh, fumble that occurs at that point. In this video, we discuss the classic concept of an integrating factor for a uh, first-order ordinary differential equation. Well, of course, the simplest differential equation is just y prime equals f of t. Uh, the solution to that simple differential equation is obtained by integrating the function f of t. So it's the antiderivative of f of t plus an arbitrary constant. Um, well, generally, uh, it's not unreasonable to describe the process of solving a first order ordinary differential equation as, quote unquote, integrating the equation. And in some sense, we do that for each of the three types of first order ODEs for which we have found a formula or a symbolic solution method, namely linear, separable, and exact. Even more generally, since people began to solve first order equations, mathematicians have searched for integrating factors. That is, given a differential equation of, in this form, an integrating factor is a function of two variables, t and y, so that when you multiply it by the differential equation, You note that this function, uh, this new, new differential equation, has the same solutions as the old one, provided that the function u, the integrating factor, is not zero. Um, decades ago, a sophomore course consisted largely of the consideration of basically a potpourri of cases in which one could do precisely that. This was somewhat artificial, since the uh, percentage of uh, ODEs that could be treated by an integrating factor uh, was actually rather small. Most uh, equations that arose in practice did not have symbolic solutions. And today, with uh, student computer access so advanced, we instead look to more useful methods, graphic, numerical, and qualitative, for handling the many equations for which symbolic equations, for which symbolic methods are not available. Still, integrating factors have a robust history, and in this video, I will do two things. One, I will show that our three symbolic methods can actually be subsumed under the rubric of integrating factors. And two, I'll give an example of a type of equation outside the domain of our favorite three that can be handled by the method of integrating factors. So let's suppose that we have a differential equation written in the form uh, like this we often encounter first order ordinary differential equations. So y is principal, the independent variable t, the independent variable. We have two functions of two variables, m and t. Our differential equation comes to us in this form. And uh, we know sometimes that we can integrate the equation. That is, we can find a function of two variables, f, t, and y. Uh, which satisfies that the partial of f with respect to the first variable is m, and the partial of f with respect to the second variable is n. And in the case that we can do that, then the solutions of the differential equation are just given by the curves f, t, y equal constant. For 
any choice of a constant, so the function f t y equal constant, which defines implicitly a curve in the t y plane, will be a solution of the given differential equation. Well, we know we can do that exactly when the equation is exact. So in order for this to be the case, the equation has to be exact, which is that the partial of m with respect to the second variable has to be equal to the partial of n with respect to the first variable. And when that condition is satisfied, the equation is called exact, and that guarantees that a function little f exists, and conversely, if little f exists, then the equation must, in fact, have been exact. Unfortunately, equations are often, usually, not exact, and one wonders what one can do, and the answer is one can search for an integrating factor. That is, find a function mu of t y so that um, if you replace the original equation by mu m dt plus mu n dy, this new equation becomes exact. The point is that the solutions of this equation are the same as the solutions of the uh, original equation, provided that mu is a non-zero, non-vanishing function. Um, and so integrating factors are non-zero functions. Uh, you seek one so that when you multiply by your original differential equation, it becomes exact. Um, that will be the case if mu m differentiated with respect to y is the same as mu n differentiated with respect to t. Um, well, as I have said, in years gone by, a sophomore course in ordinary differential equations had a huge component comprised in the search for integrating factors. That is, one would attempt to find conditions, some of which were reasonable and some of which were kind of arcane, conditions on m and n for which a mu could be found. So what I'd like to do in this video is give you a flavor for that search. Um, but first, let us observe that all three of the cases that we have already developed in which we can actually solve symbolic, symbolically, these all can be subsumed under the rubric of integrating factors. So first, let's consider linear. If you have a linear equation, uh, write it in our standard form y prime plus ptY, and I'll bring the q on this side, so minus qt equals zero, where p and q are continuous functions on some interval. This is a first order of linear equation. Uh, we can rewrite it in our standard form uh, by uh, writing it as ptY minus q of t dt plus dy equals zero. Uh, and we know in this form it's certainly not exact. The only way it could be exact is if p is identically zero, in which case we have the equation we started with, y prime equal q of t, which we just anti-differentiate. But if p is not zero, this is not an exact equation. Nevertheless, the way we handled linear equations was we actually multiplied it by an integrating factor. We multiplied by e uh, U of t was actually e to the antiderivative of p of t of dt. So in this case, mu actually didn't depend on y. If you multiply the linear equation by that integrating factor, then it becomes, in fact, exact. Um, and you can check that, but in fact, once you do that, if you multiply, if you do that and to the, compute the two derivatives, you'll see that they both equal to p t e to the antiderivative of p of t dt. So uh, linear equations are actually a special case of uh, a case of an equation where you can find an integrating factor, and your integrating factor is, in fact, uh, that expression right there. Notice a non-zero expression because it's an exponential. OK, now consider separable. So that 
that's the situation in which uh, y prime is equal to g of t h of y, where the variables separate, um, where g is a function of t alone, h is a function of y alone, and uh, we can rewrite this simply as g t dt minus 1 over h of y d, oops, y equals 0. <laughs> That's clearly an exact equation. Uh, the two corresponding partials, the derivative of m with respect to y and n with respect to t, are both 0. So um, this equation is easily integrated. You basically just integrate the two functions, g and 1 over h. So again, the separable equations uh, fall under the rubric of integrating factors, in which the integrating factor is not even necessary. Uh, and finally, the third type, namely exact equations themselves. Well, what can I say? Exact is exact. No integrating factor is required. So in some sense, each of the three types that we've considered um, uh, fit under the rubric of integrating factors. But now let's illustrate how an integrating factor can work in a case other than the, our three standard cases. Um, just to illustrate, uh, can you find a, a situation in which your integrating factor, mu t y, does not depend on t? Does not depend. on t. That is, it's just a function of y alone. So what we do is we look at the equations for exactness, mu sub m y equal mu sub n t. And um, we see what that condition becomes in the case that mu does not depend on t. Well, the left side, let's, let's uh, expand it using the product rule. It's mu sub y m uh, plus mu m sub y uh, equals. Now, if mu, mu doesn't depend on t, this will just be equal to mu and t on the right-hand side. Okay. So notice that there are two terms involving a mu here and here, and the other term involves mu y. If you bring the mu's on one side and uh, coalesce terms, uh, you wind up with just this equation, mu sub y over mu equals n sub t minus m sub y over And so, if this right-hand side, this expression, n sub t minus m sub y over m, if it does not depend on t, generally it will, but if it doesn't depend on t, if it's just a function of y, then let's just call it beta then all you have to do is integrate your equation now, and you get that mu is equal to e to the antiderivative of beta y dy. Okay. So there's that function then is an integrating factor. This is an integrating factor. And this is one of the cases that was classically uh, developed. If you uh, start out with your differential equation, m dt plus n dy equals zero, and if this expression inside the uh, circle, that expression which in principle is of some function of the two variables t and y, if it happens not to depend on t, then this expression is an integrating factor. So let's give an example. Consider the following differential equation, y dt plus 2ty minus e to the minus 2y dy equals 0. 
Okay, uh, and now is this equation exact? Well, let's see. So m is y and n is the expression in parentheses. If you compute nt minus my, what do you get? nt here is going to be, well, look at the first term. It's going to be 2y and then the derivative uh, minus the derivative of e to the minus 2y. So, uh, <laughs> no, derivative with respect to t. <sighs> Sorry, derivative of the expression in parentheses with respect to t is just 2y, and the derivative of m with respect to y is 1. Okay, so nt minus my is 2y minus 1, not 0. So the equation is not exact. But now if I divide by m, which is just y, I get the expression 2 minus 1 over y, which does not depend on t. And that's the whole point. So therefore, this method must work. If I form the function mu, e to the antiderivative of that with respect to y, that will be an integrating factor. So let's do that computation. Uh, running out of space, let's go to the next screen. Uh, our integrating factor will be mu equal e to the antiderivative of 2 minus 1 over y dy. So that's e to the 2y times e to the minus log of y, which comes to be 1 over y. So I'm assuming y is positive here. Otherwise, I have to put absolute values in. But let's just assume y positive to make things easier. And so there's my integrating factor. The method says that if I multiply the original differential equation by this expression, uh, it must become exact. So uh, let's do that. Um, I unfortunately don't have the original equation, so let's write it again. The original equation was y dt plus 2ty minus e to the minus 2y dy equals 0. And we multiply that by e to the 2y over y. It then becomes e to the 2y dt plus uh, this y can I get a 2t e to the 2y minus 1 over y dy equals 0. Okay, uh, it, it is definitely exact. If you differentiate the first expression with respect to y, you get 2e to the 2y, and if you differentiate the second one, the expression in parentheses with respect to t, you get the same thing. This is now exact. And so we can solve it by the method of exact equations. We first anti-differentiate m with respect to t. That gives us t e to the 2y plus some unspecified function of y. And the next step is we differentiate that with respect to y and set it equal to n. If we do that, we get 2t e to the 2y plus h prime of y and set it equal to n, which is 2t e to the 2y minus 1 over y. The t's have to go out. First two terms are the same. H prime is minus 1 over y. And so h is minus the log of y. Okay. And so uh, the answer to the problem is uh, the function f we've arrived at, t to the 2y minus log y equal constant. Let's write that down. Solution is f t y equals two uh, t e to the two y minus log y equal constant. Those are the solution curves to the original differential equation. 
Um, let me, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but here's another uh, example, perhaps more of the arcane variety. When can you find an integrating function of the form u t y equals nu t y? That is, where there's a single function of single variable nu such that your integrating factor is a function of the product t times y. So uh, if you take uh, your equation for exactness, and uh, expand it out using this assumption that mu is of this form, and simplify, you wind up with the following expression. Nu prime ty over nu ty equals n sub t minus m sub y over t times m minus y times n. And so this method says that if this uh, complicated expression on the right-hand side uh, should happen to be a function in, of the form r of ty, where r is a function of a single variable, then <coughs> if you set omega x equal e to the antiderivative of r of x dx, then mu of ty equals omega ty is an integrating factor. And um, just to conclude, I'll give you an example. Uh, if you look at 3t plus 6 over y dt plus t squared over y plus 3y over t, dt equals 0. <clears throat> uh, you can go through this method and you will see that um, ty is an integrating factor. Uh, and then if you employ it, that is multiply the equation by that, and you'll see it's exact and your solution uh, curves are fty equal t cubed y plus 3t squared plus y cubed equals c. Well, presumably this gives you a flavor of how the, the uh, theory of integrating factors uh, goes, or more appropriately went. Um, it was a very formulaic, very algebraic, heavily dependent on algebra and uh, calculus, um, and it developed a collection of cases in which for certain formats for M and N, one could actually uh, concoct an integrating factor. Uh, the sad fact is that uh, the percentage of differential equations that fell under this uh, scheme was um, rather small, and unfortunately for many of the equations that we that would encounter in practice, we had to develop methods other than these uh, formulaic methods, the methods that we're concentrating in, um, in this course, the symbolic, in addition to symbolic, the numerical, graphical, and qualitative techniques.